Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are getting started with the chapter 3 where we'll be talking about the test types and test process for mobile applications which will be giving you a deeper dive into the various test types and exactly how the process is conducted when it comes to testing a mobile application. This chapter will be broken, breaking down into four different topics, which is 3.1 common test types applicable for mobile applications, additional test levels applicable for mobile application, 3.3 experience-based testing techniques, which can be applied when it comes to mobile applications, and 3.4 mobile test process and approaches, which could be unique about mobile applications. So in this particular tutorial, we are getting started with the first segment of 3.1, that is installability testing. In order to understand installability testing, first of all, the name itself suggests that we are talking about once created an app, we are trying to make sure that whether the product is now installable from various sources or not. Now, installability testing is all about installing, updating, and deinstallation of the app as well. Because it should not be a problem that once a person has installed an app, it should not be deinstalled or it should not be allowing him to remove that app from the system. But at the same time, do not forget those inbuilt apps which are shared or created by the system. That means the provider of the mobile device that there are certain apps which cannot be removed from the system. For example, if you talk about contact, the phone, and even when you talk about the settings and uh, several other things like camera and all, because accidentally, if a user removes that or deletes it, it will be difficult to get it back. Right, So we want to test uh, every single applications in both the manners. One is from the point of deinstalling it in terms of like you don't want that app any longer. And the second one is some inbuilt apps which should not be uninstalled at all. So when it comes to testing the installability, tester needs to focus on installation, update, and deinstallation of the app using the following approaches. Now, what are the different approaches which you can actually make use of in order to perform these activities? Number one, application stores, which are the very common approach to be used by any user in order to install an app. All you need to do is go to the respective store and you search for the app, click on the app, click on install, and then that's it. You open the app and start using it. Now that's what the very first approach is, which says the installation process may be different depending on the user of the app. The user could install the app from the market store, such as Google Play Store, Apple's App Store, the user of enterprise app will be required to perform installation via a link or a distribution service such as Haki app or the app center, which is generally from an enterprise solution point of view. There are a lot of applications which are not publicly available on the Google Play Store or the iPhone App Store. But of course, we do have certain stores where the enterprise applications can be hosted for the employees of the organization to install it and make use of it. The other way of doing it is side loading, which is also in simple term called as copying and installing the app. Now, a lot of time it happens, you do have several applications with you, which is like kind of share it, which allows you to share the APK file. So person really doesn't have to download the file, but the downloaded file can be shared with your colleagues, your friends and relatives in order to quickly install right from that APK file itself. So some operating system provide the option of installing the application by copying it to a mobile device and installing it from the file itself. So you don't really have to navigate to any store in order to download it. You just have to get that file and start installing that. The third option is of course desktop applications, where desktop applications such as Apple iTunes on for uh, uh, iOS and for Android app installer for the Android are available for installing apps on the smartphone as well. Now the tester needs to download the app in this application and use a cable to install it from there to the smartphone. Most of these desktop applications also allow deinstallation of the app. And again, not so quite often with the Android users, but if you are an iPhone user, you would certainly agree to this. This is the best way to do it, to be more secure in order to install that using the iTunes. 
further to add when it comes to insulation how it can actually be performed by different methods what are the different methods of doing it of course there are different sources of it to get the file but installing can be done using two different options one is OTA which stands for over the air via Wi-Fi or cellular data and the second is data cable where you can have the file in your system and you can pass the installation commands from the system to the phone Further adding more of the like testing point of view that when it comes to testing of installability testing, what kind of test conditions can be considered in order to validate the installability of the app and of course the update and deinstallation and many other things related to that. So number one, perform the installation, deinstallation and upgrade on internal as in and external memory if supported. So if your device is supporting you an external memory, try to do the update from there or try to install in that and see that if the app responds properly because a lot of the time it happens your internal memories are less compared to the external memory or generally you get very limited internal memory with the phone and you were asked to add additional memory cards sd cards to support external spaces so you can always make use of external spaces also to install them but there are certain applications which will be limited to internal applications or internal space or storage option so they will not even try to be installed on the external devices so this is where we want to test if your app is compatible with both of them then try installing in both the options if you want to restrict the installation to the internal storage then make sure that the external storages are not the options selected for installation reinstallation of the app when the retain app data option was chosen during the previous deinstallation many of this time it happens that when generally for some reason you want to uninstall but you know that at some point of time you will be reinstalling it so during the deinstallation you would have tried setting up the option that retain the data then there are certain files which will remain in your device so when you install it next time then it does happen that it pulls all the information, your settings, your credentials, and a lot many other things right from there and shows you again the same look as you had before uninstalling the device app. So this gives you benefit of retaining and recovering all the information what you need. Reinstallation of the app when the retain app data was not chosen during the previous deinstallation. Now in that case, does it happen that the app when it is freshly installed, does it retain the information or not? Because not always you want to retain the information. Sometimes you want to go with a fresh installation to start again. Probably, for example, banking application. Now you were using a particular bank account in your mobile phone. Now you want to reset it and use it for a different account. So instead of adding to the same application or trying to, you know, uh, puzzle around with your app, you uninstall it and say, do not retain the data and then do a fresh installation to do a free uh, uh, again, a new setup, a fresh setup in order to create a new account or instance. Cancelling or interrupting the installation or deinstallation, for example, by shutting down the mobile device during the process or disconnecting from the internet. Could be several reasons for that. For example, if you disconnect from the internet, whenever you get the internet back, it resumes from there, right? Second thing, when you disconnect from the uh, device itself that is shutting it down or like power back off, is that again a possibility that can you resume the installation or download of the file or it starts again afresh so you would see a lot of things different from each one of them for example when it comes to update it always restarts from the beginning right because it doesn't want to crash your data so from the safety point of view it happens right from the beginning every time but on the other hand if it is an app you will definitely need a resumable link it will be always a resumable link where you if get connected disconnected from the network when you get connected back you will be resume, resuming the session once again resuming interrupted installation deinstallation and upgrade after cancellation or uninterrupted or interrupting so again that's the other way around of the same scenario permission related testing for example some app requests permission to use your address book this important test must verify app behavior if the user denies permission for example, is there a corresponding message sent to the user? So, you know, a lot of things can be validated. Generally, a lot of apps, when you install today, they prompt you for accessing your microphone, speaker, camera. There are certain applications which responsibly ask you for these access only when you try to utilize that feature. 
but not always by default when you install it. But there are certain apps which are fake and they ask you before the installation itself that do you allow access to camera, do you allow access to this and that, and probably they never need such things, right? So you have to be extra cautious in making sure that you're not installing a spam on your device which can ruin your privacy and your information. Update the app and verify that no data is lost, which is another important thing to be taken into account that whenever update happens, it does not reset your app to the initial point. It should retain all the information and gives, uh, gives the convenience for the user to start working and continue it from there where it was before the update. Some apps require jailbroken iOS or rooted Android devices which gives the user the administrator rights over the device. Most platform providers do not support jailbreaking routing as it may have legal consequences. An app not required jailbreaking or routing may not need to be tested for jailbreaking or routing devices. So it's just like, you know, another standard term to be used if you want to give some of your users the administrator access in order to modify and customize the app. Just like many other tools available for testing where you have an administrator access which has the rights to modify the tool or customize the tool based on the organization need. So same way, if you are giving the freedom to your end users to customize the tool as per your uh, convenience or the way they want to use it, then jailbreaking or routing are the two options respectively for iOS and Android which need to be tested. On the other hand, if you are doing the same thing or you're not implementing that, then make sure that these options are not tested at all. So it's not a mandatory level. It's just that this is an option level. If required, you will test it. If not implemented, you will not test it. So that's all from the very first tutorial team. We were just talking about installability testing. We'll get back to you with the next interesting tutorial on this. Stay tuned for that. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.